Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast, um, my 5 p.m. Pacific time, regular thing. Um, this is episode 457, and the topic today is show a little respect. And I said, ladies and gents, to pref preface it, but I want to talk about some things. And this started from yesterday's broadcast, a few other things, but before I get to that, let me choose myself and give you more content. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and every day I do these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's topic sounds simple, but it's got a lot more to it. I can feel a lot of stuff building before I speak to this. So again, every day I do these talks, uh, today's number 457, yeah, 457, I think, today. And the topic is, ladies and gents, Please show some respect and what I'm aware of and yesterday I talked about gentlemen the 20 traits of a gentleman as part of this and I did mention about how some women could learn some things too and so I'm gonna hopefully provide some insight not just a rant because it's tempting to go into rant mode right now um, so I may start there <laughs> we'll see where it goes basically what I'm aware of is that there's a lot of people out there who act superior and aren't and think they know more than other people do and will not filter what they read and react and respond and say things without thinking about it. And I'm watching that happen a lot on social media. Men and women are both doing this. Um, I'm also very aware that in real life, as it were, outside of the screen, as <laughs> well, I guess it is in real life, people are out there um, judging people a lot, judging each other a lot based on criteria that isn't accurate. Now, I'm going to put a caveat in now and speak about it more later. There are people who you want to avoid because what they're about isn't necessarily constructive, additive, or positive. In fact, it's very denigrating and um, corrosive to your well-being. So I'm going to put those on the side for now. I may come back to those later on. But here's the thing. Most of us are on our own journeys and have had our own experiences, our own challenges in life. And to make assumptions about those people without finding more about them is a really poor way of living in this world. It's funny, I didn't think I was going here, but I'm going to go here first. What I'm aware of is the judgment we have about people's choices in relationship, choices in lifestyle, choices in car, choices in location, choices in everything and we judge them based upon our own filters. And this is a trap that we'll fall into because reality is for most of us, we've got a lot to learn from other people. You know, I've, I've come through my own journey getting to where I am now, and I've talked about it before on the broadcast, so it's not like it's news. But coming from a very reserved, white, Jewish, English community, my life was somewhat sheltered in a way, although it got very exposed very quickly when I went to college and left and went to London and went out into other countries and lived in other, in other places too. And what I'm aware of is when people have very myopic, myopic views of culture, of our people of different choices. Now, yes, there's the big stereotypes or, or the big um, categories, you know, gender differences, sexuality differences, religious differences, color differences or race differences, all these differences that for some people are enough to cause them to judge. Now, I'm actually going to play smaller than, smaller than that in a way, which is when you judge other people independent of what they look like. Because it's a whole other topic to get into when you start talking about racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, etc., etc. I'm speaking more about how we are interacting with each other and we judge and label each other inaccurately. And when I spoke yesterday, just to harp on, that, harp on that for a second, yes, I'm going to harp on it for a second. I was talking about these 20 principles, and I was using it from an article, I, I, I posted a link to the article in, that, in the broadcast, about how we, how men can step up. A lot of men aren't living to the best of their ability. A gentleman is respectful of other people. And so I've had a rant running for a while, which is accurate, but it's, mis but it's missing a piece, and I'll get to that in a second, where men have been disrespecting women. And yes, with the Me Too conversation, absolutely starting to change the paradigm, but still there's such an assumptive, an assumption being made by men about women that's not respectful. And that's part of my mission and work, so I'm not going to let that one, I'm going to come back to that as well, I think. But I'll speak to the other side for a second, which is this. 
there are a lot of women out there painting men with the same brush. They may have had a bad relationship or there may have been something horrible happened to them and they don't trust other men or they don't respect other men. Now, trusting, I understand if you've been hurt and abused or raped by a man, to trust other men will be challenging. However, to judge every single man because it's pretty sure with one man, regardless of what happened, is a big assumption about that person. And so for a lot of women out there, either one who have had challenges in the past where their treatment of men has become, or the sure their, their respect of men's been trashed because of one man, it's unfortunate, I hope you can change that. Second part, there's also some of you ladies out there have been so driven to succeed at the expense of your femininity, at the expense of your freedom, and at the expense of your ability to be comfortable around men without feeling like you're threatened by them. And this is a big one for all the women out there who are entrepreneurs, who are in the business world, who have been working their way up the ladder, as it were, to succeed and on your own terms to win, which is amazing and awesome. At the same time, when you don't feel safe around men because you don't trust that they will respect you, you kind of get what you ask for. Meaning that we, we tend to create our reality based on what we believe inside. Okay, this one now. Uh, this is not a scheduled or planned um, talk, so what comes up is coming up. So that's where I'm going with it. I am a firm believer that we create our own reality. At least we create our attitude to our reality in the way we relate to our reality, which means in this t context that if we find that we don't trust, like ladies don't trust men, they're going to find men who are untrustworthy as in you project it out and it comes back to you. Same is true for men with women, men with men, women with women. For a long time, I didn't trust other men because I didn't feel like I would be respected or appreciated or have a sense of um, friendship with them. It's more about competitive and combative. It'd be like, you know, if I don't stand up for myself and I don't, I don't if, I, if I trust them, they'll steamroll right over me because that happened a few times when I was younger. But nowadays, more than ever, I'm so clear about how brotherhood and supporting for each other men to be transparent, to be honest and be authentic is a must have in this world. Certainly for my life and it's happening more and more as there's men that I trust. And yes, there are men I don't trust because I watch the patterns that they play out and the way they act and the way they respond and the way they talk and realize that I just simply have to distance myself from them because their way of running life, their, their modus, opera modus operandi is not very evolved, just to be transparent. And so rather than sit in judgment of them, which is very tempting, I do my best to walk away and just be free and live my life separately from that. So what I'm talking about in respect does not mean you have to love and respect everybody else on the planet because that's pushing the envelope a bit too far. But I am suggesting, one, that you get clear who the people around you are because if they're not matching what you want, you want to change something inside. If you're out of alignment with your truth or out of alignment with them and you realize that, that what you're doing is projecting all over them and you're actually painting with a brush that's not their truth, then you might want to look at them a different way and maybe respect them and learn more about them to actually inquire about these people rather than assume about them, which is what most of us do. We, have, we generally, I'm including myself, have a tendency, a habit of presuming things about people that aren't true because they look a certain way again or they dress a certain way or whatever that is without actually getting to know who that person is. And for most of us, we could learn a thing or two about meeting somebody different who doesn't look like we think they should look. I want to get back to the inner piece again. The power we have to create, the power we have to attract, the power we have to manifest in the world is working all the time. You know, the saying goes like, if you believe you can, or believe you can't, you're right. That's, that's a quote from Henry Ford from way back when he was still alive. <laughs> and the point of it is, is that we are manifesting in the world. Our life has happened step by step. It's almost like a, um, we're building our road one foot in front of us as we go forward in our journey. But the truth is we're building that road based on what we think inside. And that wiring, that programming that is running it may not be our own choice. Maybe what we were raised with. Maybe what we believed as kids. And so, so I'm just, re just rereading my um, chapter in the book that I'm, I'm editing right now. And that was the piece I was talking about is that we take on at a very young age this, this wiring, these beliefs about how things are. And so we choose to live our life by painting or laying out that road ahead of us, one foot ahead of us with the wiring programming from when we were kids. Now, if you are not liking the road you're paving, you're creating in front of you, the simple trick, the key, the solution, as I mentioned before, is to actually go back inside 
and see what it is that's creating that result. Because it's not about the results coming out, it's the driver of the result inside that's causing it. And for your freedom, for your ability to be able to live life fully, you want to create that road in front of you, again, laying the road one foot in front of you, one foot at a time, the direction you want to go in and the way you want to do it. And if you're not, if you're not having the results you want, time to look inside. I didn't know I was going to go there, but say la vie. So, oh, that's the piece I want to add on. So coming back to the beginning, in a way, that respect piece I was talking about, is for many of us, we lash out other, we lash out other people, we judge other people, we blame other people, because we do the same thing to that inside. Again, as in, as in, as within, as as without, as within. There's a, there's a quote I'm trying to misquote somewhere. So, as within, so without. That's what I mean. So, if you are noticing outside that you're separating yourself from other people by judging, blaming, or being upset versus respecting, then maybe you want to learn about respecting yourself. Because self-respect is what drives you to learn to respect other people. And sometimes self-respect, <laughs> as I know from experience, moves you to remove yourself from situations that don't respect you as well because you know the framework doesn't match. Again, you create your reality from what's inside. If you respect yourself, some environments you may find yourself in that don't match that, you go, I need to leave to protect, to preserve, not so much protect, but to preserve your own intentions and where you're going. It's interesting. I'm looking at how this is coming through. It wasn't what I expected to come through, but let me say one thing that was on my mind at the beginning of this. Um, There is a large amount of assumption going around and judgment going around in society and on social media especially we're noticing that, that we collectively have room to grow beyond. We have collectively have an ability to deepen our self-respect and respect those around us. It's tempting so many times based upon pictures and other things to make them think that they're so much better than us or worse than us or whatever it is and the, the truth is that we don't know for sure not until you ask them so especially on social media the belief that things are a certain way because we see someone's social media profile may or may not be accurate in fact 9 out of 10 it probably isn't so stop assuming and be willing to look inside and see what's driving that because you may be simply trying to make yourself feel worse or feel better based on what's happening out there. And here's one of my suggestions for you. If that is what's driving you, that you're basing your own inner equilibrium based on what's happening outside, you are creating yourself a situation, you're creating for yourself a victimization of yourself because what you're doing is making your own state dependent upon something outside of yourself. And that is codependence. And that is a victim role. So my shortcut to the solution is that if you are willing to turn within, if you're willing to look inside, if you're willing to see yourself as you, ch as you really want to see yourself, then what happens outside doesn't, doesn't trigger you. In fact, you can control your own mood. You can control your own feelings. You can feel good about what life is, independent of what's happening out there. I was talking about this last week, I think. I was quoting Victor Frankl from uh, Man's Search for Meaning, where he talks about how his only ability when he's in, in concentration camp was he had control over his mood his attitude, his ability to respond. He can change his environment, but he changed his internal state. Now, none of us have the situation nowadays, at least I don't think if you're watching my broadcast, you are. But you, we still have the habit of running negative stuff on ourselves and we don't need to. So my suggestion, my invitation to you is to do the inner work, to raise your own vibration, to raise your own self-esteem, to raise your own self-support structures so you can actually be more responsive versus reactive and be more willing to take care of yourself independent of what's happening around you. That's the respect I'm inviting you to look at for yourself as well as other people. Interesting talk. Okay, I wasn't sure it's was going to go there, but so a couple of things to add to this. Um, I mentioned this before and I mentioned it again because it still has value. Is it so tempting to run this judgment planes and helicopters going over okay so it's still as a reminder um, that all this stuff I'm talking about self-respect and self-appreciation self-esteem self stems from loving yourself or I should say it's fueled by loving yourself and so many people out there have been 
forgetting how to love themselves, which is why I created the self-love practice that I have on my website. And I'm going to give you the link in the comments. I would invite you to check that out if you feel like you could learn to love yourself more. It's simple, it's powerful, and it works. Check it out. And, and just so you know, verbally, in case you don't know what, because if you're listening on, on my podcast, you wouldn't see the link. Um, if you go to barryselby.com forward slash self-love or one word, you can check it out there. Second thing I want to say is that if you're finding yourself stuck with these attitude issues and this internal adjustments and you're feeling some challenge with the ability to be clear in your respect of yourself and other people, you might be a candidate for coaching. <laughs> say it clearly. Because a lot of my work is helping my clients reevaluate and realign their values inside. And if that's something you're interested in finding more about, I invite you to set up a discovery session with me, a free complimentary call. If you go to barryselby.com forward slash chat, I'll put the link in the comments as well. And book a time, fill out the form, and we'll talk. I think that's basically it. I wanted to make sure I got those plugs in, but also make sure that it gives them my thoughts. This has been an interesting topic. It wasn't, clear, it, wasn't as, it wasn't as clear as I usually am. So if you find you're not getting... No, I'm not going to say that because I'll be judging myself. <laughs> There's some good tips along the way. It wasn't as pretty as I was wanting it to be, but then that's the way it works out. As always, these talks are very spontaneous and unscripted, so that's the way it is. And this is my 457th broadcast. Um, more to come. So I'll be back again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. By the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day. They're on Facebook Live initially. Then you go onto my business page on Facebook, onto YouTube, and then onto my podcast. And those links so you can get them is on Facebook. It's barryselby.author. So facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. My YouTube channel is Barry Selby. My name, all my social media is my name. Um, and the channel is Messages for the Masculine. And then on my podcast, which is on iTunes, search for Messages for the Masculine, subscribe, download, and listen to them there. Um, with that, I thank you for watching. i back in tomorrow. And um, yeah, show some respect to yourself first. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you, Marsha. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.